Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti from OnlinePhotographyTraining.com. Welcome to my video series, Mastering the Nick Collection. Several years ago, the Nick Collection of plugins was the number one set of plugins for Photoshop and Lightroom. Cashing in on their success, they sold off to Google. Google marketed the suite for a couple of years with a few updates. Then they announced that they would not be updating the software any longer, and they made it free to download. Around that time, I did a set of training videos on the software that proved to be very popular. Recently, the company DxO purchased the rights to the Nick Collection and announced that they would be developing and updating it. Although it's no longer free, it is nice to have a caretaker for this software because it is very good. With all the good things happening with Nick, I decided to update my training videos on the product. This new series will be more in depth and thorough than the previous series. Please be aware that I have no affiliation with the company. I'm not being paid by them to do these videos. And if you purchase the software, I will not be making a commission on the sale. With that said, if you could do me a favor, if you like these videos, please click the thumbs up button and share them. Finally, if you can make a donation, I would greatly appreciate it. That info is in the description below this video along with a link to my code of ethics statement. Let's get started. In this video, we're gonna finish up our discussion of Color Effects Pro 4 by Nick Software. In our next video, I'm going to introduce to you Silver Effects Pro 2. As you can see, we're in Photoshop. When you install the Nick series of plugins onto your computer, it will automatically install the plugins into Photoshop. When it does, you'll find that this selective tool will always open up no matter what image you open up into Photoshop, even if you have no intention of sending that image off into a Nick plugin. This can be annoying and you may want to get rid of this selective tool permanently. And there's a setting you could change to do that. And there's also a couple other settings that I'd like to talk about. If you look at the tool itself and you look in the lower left hand corner, you'll see settings. If I click on that, you'll notice this settings dialog comes up and the very first setting is automatically open the selective tool. Just change that to do not automatically open the selective tool and then that tool will not always open when you open an image up into Photoshop. The other two settings are rather important. The second one there, the one in the middle, is apply filter to and by default it will say image composite. And what that means is no matter how many layers you have over here in the layers panel. It will just take a composite of all those layers and use that to send to Nick and allow you to apply the filters to it. And then it will send that back into Photoshop. And by default, that's what it's set to. And I suggest that's what you leave it at. The alternate to that is an active layer. Now you can be on the active layer that you want to send to any of the Nick plugins and it will work right now. It will send this active background layer to the plugin, but let's just say that you had an adjustment layer on here. Let's get rid of this temporarily so I could do it. Um, let's say we put levels on there. All right. So we have this levels adjustment layer. Now, if I have this set to active layer, and I try to send it, and I'm active on this non-pixel layer. It's an adjustment layer. A pixel layer is the actual picture. So it would be a background layer or a non-background layer that is the picture of the, you know, the actual image. If I'm on this non-pixel layer and I try to send it to any plugin, if I click Color Effects Pro 4, you'll see you'll get this error dialog telling us that the command Color Effects Pro 4 is not currently available. It's because I'm on this non-pixel layer. If, on the other hand, I have this set to image composite, it will work fine. Also, what you'll find is that if you're on a non-pixel layer, like an adjustment layer, and you go up to the top filter menu, all of the plugins will be grayed out. So you will not be able to send it to the Nick collection at all. So if you're using the filter menu, you will always have to be on a pixel layer for those choices 
to be active, including the NIC collection. So that is kind of a little bit different than using the selective tool because the selective tool, when you have it set to image composite, will work no matter what layer you're clicked on over here on the right. This third option is after clicking apply. By default, it will apply the filtered effect to a separate layer. And I recommend that's what you leave it on. That way, whenever you do any adjustments in any of the NIC plugins, it will come back and put a layer on top of your layer stack, and that layer is going to be all those adjustments. If down the road you decide you don't like what you did in the NIC plugin, you could just delete that layer and you're good to go. And you're back, really, right back where you started. The alternate choice to that is merge the filtered effect to the current layer. So then if you use that, that means it's going, let's say we're on this background layer, it's actually going to apply anything you do in Nick to that background layer, and it will be more difficult to undo it. So my recommendation is for the first choice, you just do whichever you like. Either the selective tool is always open or always not open. The I, I suggest you apply the filter to an image composite, and I um, suggest that you apply after clicking apply, that it's apply the filtered effect to a separate layer. That's what I suggest you leave those set as. If for some reason the selective tool is gone, either you decided not to have it open every time you open up Photoshop, or you just exit out like I just did, and you want it to reappear, go up to this file menu, and then down to automate, and then down to the NIC collection selective tool. Click on that and you'll get the tool back. So I want to send this image over into Color Effects Pro 4 and I'm going to do it right from the selective tool. Again, you could do it from the filter menu at the top. Just remember if you're using the filter menu, you must be on an actual pixel layer. You can't be an an, an, on an adjustment layer. But I'm going to send it to uh, Color Effects Pro 4. I'm going to click right there. And what it's doing, because I have it set to composite, it's actually just going to take a composite of those two layers I had over there and send that over to Nick, Color Effects Pro 4. And because Color Effects Pro 4 has that sticky control, whatever was the last filter I used, it's going to put that filter as the first filter here. And you can see whatever I did in Nick previously, the last filter I used must have been the detail extractor and it applied that automatically to this image. And you can see there's a before and there's an after. Now, it's probably a little bit too heavy handed for this image, but I'm gonna leave it there. If you don't want to apply this, whatever filter was there, you could just exit out, hit the X key in the top right hand corner and then apply a different filter. Uh, but I'm gonna leave it for now. And I'm going to add another filter. I'd like to enhance the trees right here in the midground, or in, yeah, in the midground. So we're going to click Add Filter right here, and I'm going to go over here. And I think Indian Summer. It's one of my favorite filters. It works fairly well on a lot of different images. And you can see as soon as I added it, it did something to those trees and made them a little more red. Um, also, remember from our previous videos that each filter has a set of presets inside of it. And if I look at the Indian Summer here on the left-hand panel, you see these little rectangles over there. If I click on those rectangles, you'll access the presets that are within the Indian Summer filter. And you can see the very top one is called Soft Red, and that's the one that was added. Below that is Strong Red. Below that is Soft Yellow. And below that is Strong Yellow. Now these presets are also over here in the filter itself in the right hand panel and it's called the method here. And you can see the first one is the uh, soft red, second one is strong red, third one is soft yellow, and that fourth one is strong yellow. For this image I think I like the strong yellow and with this filter once you apply the method you could go to this enhance foliage slider and either make it stronger or weaker with this slider. And I'm going to leave it right where it was at 50% for now. And I'll probably come back in and readjust this later. Now, one thing I am noticing, although it's mostly just affecting the trees, it is affecting their clothing a little bit. And actually, these um, cement squares 
that are in the foreground. Uh, if I turn this off, you can see off, there's on, off, on. You can see how it's a, giving a little bit of a yellow tone to all this. And I really just want it to affect the trees. So I'm going to apply some control points. I'm going to go a little quick. We covered control points very thoroughly in our last video. But I'm going to apply positive control points. This is where I want the effect to affect. So I'm going to click the plus sign. And I want to go on this left-hand side and get these trees over here on the left. So I'm just going to click once. And you could see how it applied it to the trees and removed it everywhere else. Pretty much everywhere else. If I do before, after after. So you can see it's pretty much applying it right there. And I could adjust it with this slider. And I want to duplicate this control point and send it all the way across the trees. And to do that very quickly, hold the Alt or Option key. And it's Alt if you have a PC, Option if you have a Mac. And just click on this little button right there and drag this second control point off and put it there. And I'm going to adjust the size of this one. And then I'm going to do it again, hold that Alt or Option key in again, and bring it over here. And shrink it down a little bit. And bring it over here. And then bring it over here. Bring it over here. And bring it over there. And I'll make this one a little bigger. There we go. So we have it going right across the trees. There's before. And there's after. You can see it's pretty much affecting just the trees. Now I'm going to look at my control points by hitting this expose triangle. And when I click on that, it rolls down all the control points. And if I want to see where exactly the control point is affecting on the image, I could click this little box on the right. And you could see wherever is white is where the control point is affecting. And wherever is black is where it's not affecting. So this control point is predominantly affecting the trees, but it is affecting the water a little bit and even the people a little bit uh, over there. If I click up here, it'll turn all of those on so I could see my entire uh, view of the image with all the control points active. And you can see I'm a still affecting the water a little bit. I mean, if it was absolute black, then it's not affecting it at all. But because it's more gray, that means it's being affected a little bit. So I really want to take it away from those areas. So I'm going to add some negative control points. So I'm going to click the negative button over here. And I'm going to add a control, a negative control point right there. And you can see how now that is darker. It took it away. So I'm going to propagate these control points, these negative control points, all the way across the water by holding in the Alt or Option key by duplicating them. So I'm holding in that Alt or Option key. Again, it's Alt if you have a PC option, if you have a Mac. And I'll put one there. And you can move it around a little bit and see how it best affects your area. And I'll just keep doing it. Maybe I'll put this one on the person there. And that one there. Person there. And there. Across this water. Just like that. So we have a, a lot of control points. And you can see how it's now mostly this, this Indian summer filter is mostly hitting the trees. It's affecting the sky a little bit. For, for the sake of this demonstration, I'm not going to worry about that right now. So I'm going to turn off this kind of negative view by clicking this little button right there. And we're back to our image now with all the control points laid down. And let's see a before after. There's before and there's after. So you can see it just really is affecting those trees like I want it to do. And you can see it's not affecting the cement in the foreground, their clothing, really at all. So we're in good shape. So I'm going to add another filter. So um, I'm going to click Add Filter over here on the right. So we're adding a new one. I'm going to go back and look at our filters um, uh, choices over here. And I think I want to add more depth to those uh, trees. Just they're kind of flat looking. So I want to add a little bit of depth. And I think levels and curves will work well with that. So I'm going to click on that. And I'm going to look at the presets that are within the levels and curves filter by clicking on these little triangles. And you can see that there's, um, or I'm sorry, rectangles. You can see there's seven presets here. One is neutral, and that really doesn't do anything. There's before, there's after. You can see that's not doing anything. 
Below that is a subtle S curve that adds some contrast. Below that is a strong S curve. Below that is a subtle luminosity S curve. Below that is a strong luminosity S curve. Below that is yellowed highlights, which I really don't like. And below that is cool contrast. That's kind of cool. It's kind of like a alternate process film look, but I'm not going to use that for this. I think what I want to use is this subtle S curve. I could come in and just move the curve myself, of course, but I think I'm, you know, I like that preset, but I don't want it everywhere. I just want it on the trees. So I could go back in and apply control points again everywhere I want it and then apply control points everywhere I don't want it. But there's an easier way. I already did that with the Indian Summer filter. I could just copy those control points and then paste them to the Levels and Curves filter. To copy the control points that are in the Indian Summer filter, click right here. This is a flyout menu. And when I click there, you'll see Copy Control Points. We'll click on that. Then go to the Levels and Curves filter where I want to apply these control points. Click on that and click on Paste Control Points. And what you'll find is it just applied those same control points in the same exact spot and they're affecting the same exact group of pixels. Now we'll do before and after with the Levels and Curves. There's before and there's after. So you can see it's affecting the trees, but you can see it's affecting the sky just a little bit because I didn't add any negative control points up there. And I mentioned for the sake of this video, I'm not going to. I'm just going to leave it as is. But I like the added depth that the levels and curves filter gave me to those trees. It just makes them look a little more uh, lively and not as flat. So Oh, uh, let's see. This detail extractor I mentioned I'd come back to. It may be a little bit heavy-handed, so I'm going to pull that down just a little bit. And let's do a total before-after by clicking on this compare button and holding it in. There's before, there's after, before, after. Okay, I like that. So I'm done with this. I want to go back into Photoshop. Now, if you look over here in the bottom right-hand side, all I need to do is click OK. But if you look over here, there's a brush. That brush button was not there when we used ColorFX Pro 4 as a Lightroom plugin. And I'm going to tell you how to use that brush in a second. It's a way of doing these adjustments without using control points. Although what you'll find is it's a little clunky. So I'm going to click OK for now. And what it will do is now it's going to save this image and it will open up as a layer at the top of the layer stack in Photoshop. It's going to take a little while. Whenever I run this uh, recording software to uh, record my screen and my voice uh, for these videos, it kind of makes everything else run a little slower. So Photoshop, Nick, Lightroom, all those programs run a little bit slower because of this recording software I use. So it's done and you can see now it's this top layer and I'm going to get rid of the select tool for a second. And you can see there's before and there's after. So it applied it and it's on its own layer. So that's nice. That's why I suggest you have that one setting set so you apply this new layer. Now what about that brush? All right, let's talk about that brush. What we're going to do is I'm going to undo what I did by clicking delete. And we're going to get rid of this levels adjustment layer too because I didn't do anything to that anyway. And we're going to send this background layer over. So I'm going to go up to the filter menu. We're going to go to Nick Collection and we're going to go to Color Effects Pro 4. Now, this is going to be a little quick and I'm not really going to care what the image looks like. I just want to demonstrate how you use the brush tool. So we have our image. It put that detail extractor back again and I'm just going to make it like really hideous. Okay, so I'm turning it way up so you could see what I'm doing. So I mean, you could add like 10 filters here. You could still use the brush tool. doesn't matter. When you're ready to use the brush tool, click on Brush. What it will do, it will save the image to Photoshop on its own layer. It's going to take a second. But you'll see it will have a layer mask with it. And when it does finally have this layer mask, 
I'm just going to take a second. Um, your selective tool dialog will pop up again. Your Photoshop will open up the brush tool and you'll be painting in white. And those of you that are familiar with Photoshop knows that when you have a mask, white reveals, black hides. So what it's going to do, it's going to have this processed image, the NIC processed image open up and it's going to have this black mask so it's hiding the effect. It opens back up into Photoshop. As I mentioned, you have the actual layer with a black mask. So we really can't see the effect because of that black mask. But it will open up the brush tool and you'll be painting in white. And once that happens, you'll see that the um, selective tool now has this tool section. So you could paint, erase, fill, or clear. And by default, it's going to be in paint. So you're going to be painting in white. So you could paint the effect in where you want it or paint the filters in where you want it, just like that. So, you know, it's a little bit clunky because in my opinion, because let's say you went into Nick and you added a filter to um, adjust the trees the way you want them. Then you added another filter to adjust the sky then you added a third filter to adjust the water and then a fourth filter to adjust the people. So you have these five filters uh, adjusting five different things. When you come over into Photoshop with this brush tool mode, you can't brush selectively, meaning you can't brush one filter in one place, another filter in another place, and a third filter in a third place, and so on. You just can't do that. You're brushing all the filters in or all the filters out. So it's a nice tool to use if you're just using um, or you're just trying to affect one part of your image, no matter how many filters you use, as long as it's one part of the image, in this case the trees, it will work okay. If I did a filter just for the sky or maybe 10 filters for the sky, it would work fine. I could just brush it in on the sky. But like I mentioned, if you're adding multiple filters, to adjust multiple parts of your image, this brush tool does not do a good job, in my opinion. It's not effective. So that's probably everything you need to know about Color Effects Pro 4. I hope that covered it. I'm sorry my computer was a little clunky and it took everything to a um, little longer than it should have. Let's put it that way. Um, that's it. Thank you, everyone that watches my videos. I truly do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon.